throw is incomplete. There's things that, that all of us could have done to, to be better. The Chiefs have won the game. But we just need to be better in the details and the, the execution. Welcome to the Bet MGM Studio and the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Shift 4 with the head coach. I'm Mike Keith. 48 hours removed from the Titans' overtime defeat in Kansas City. And the only way to describe it is that was a battle. It was. It was a battle. And I'm, you know, obviously always proud of the way that we, we compete. Um, just came up a little short there in the end. And, you know, really hope to, uh, to be able to find some of that football that we played there so, so well in the second quarter. What did you like so much about what you did in the second quarter? Well, I just thought all three phases were, were operating and functioning uh, together. You know, I thought they, they really fed off of, of one another. Um, you know, we were able to hit some, some X plays there offensively. Um, defensively, we were able to get some stops. I thought the special teams unit uh, was able to create some field position as well. In the first eight games, particularly in the last six, you found the formula that works for you. It's just a matter of doing that and doing it well, right? Yeah, and consistently over the course of, of the game and not just in spurts. And, and when you play a team uh, that's as good as the Kansas City was and, and, and is, uh, you're going to have to do it for, for the entire game. And we you know, just weren't able to do things in all three phases um, throughout the, the, the course of the game consistently. But the Titans did do some things very well. Let's take a look at Mike Vrabel's six-pack to see six of the better plays of the night. First offensive snap, rookie tight end Chigakakwo making it happen going 48 yards. Yeah, I thought this was a great job of just getting the ball in Chig's hands, and you can see everybody out there trying to block, trying to finish, uh, and he came out on the other side. You know, he broke a tackle, he took a hit, you know, was able to protect the football there, and you know, create an X play uh, early on in the game. Here's a cackle. One, two. Bouncing three, off, guys. Four. There you go. Come he's out on the other power. side. He's got power. He does. And, and he plays hard and he's, and he's gotten better. And you know, we have to keep finding ways to, to ha allow him to help us. Also made a great special teams play later in the game. Really, really good special teams player. And he's improved. Um, you and I have talked about some of these young offensive players. Him and Hassan have, have really improved and become core special teams players for us. Speaking of outstanding offensive players, how about a little Derrick Henry in quarter number two? The King going 56. Yeah, this is one of our better blocked plays of the night, obviously. And um, got everybody out there, got Derrick into his fifth step. And, you know, he, he's able to do the rest from there. And, you know, what we're, we're going to keep having to hit some of these to, to be able to change field position and change momentum. You see Nate Davis there helping Ben, you know, working to the second level. And Derek doing a nice job of stretching and cutting it. And guys competing here to try to get down there and get extra blocks, Nick Westbrook and, 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 and Robert Woods. And then two plays later, the Titans get an outstanding pass play to set them up inside the five-yard line. It's Austin Hooper on a good throw. Yeah, and it, and it was, I think, just the matchup there with the size uh, on the safety, the tight end on the safety, making sure that he didn't overthrow him, that he gave him a ball that he could go and use his body and his catch radius and, um, you know, good protection. It allows Malik to, you know, to be able to get some air underneath that thing and, and Hoop's able to bring it in, get us down there inside the red zone. In the first half when you were on track yardage-wise, Malik was very decisive. Sure, he absolutely was. And we were getting the ball out of his hand and, he was doing the same thing, and the operation w was okay. I mean, it could have been better, um, but it wasn't. We weren't sitting there with, with the play clock down to zero every time or uh, false starts in a hostile environment. There's a lot of good things there and a lot of improvement. So we've seen some offense. Let's take a look at some defense. First career interception for Roger McCrary came in the third quarter. Yep, and you can see Danico here getting active. You know, they're trying to work a little misdirection, a little... 
uh, you know, flash Kelsey across and try to catch us off guard. And, you know, he kind of shot put it in under pressure and Kelsey couldn't handle it. And, and Roger was there uh, kind of laid on the ground like at Auburn, but we can get up and run if they don't touch us. But, you know, he did a nice job catching his ball off the deflection. Yeah, you're going to celebrate a little bit there in those Bayard and Long, get him up and get him moving. Get him going. Pick him up and, and, and point him in the right direction. He'll know what to do next time. I think so. Yeah, he'll know what to do. All right, another outstanding defensive element in this game was pass rush. The Titans were able to get some heat with a lot of different people, including Mario Edwards Jr. Well, again, it always starts with somebody else, and there Danico is getting good push there on, on Thune. Kind of backs uh, his guy into Mahomes. He can't step up. So now the, the rush is coordinated. We just, we didn't have enough of plays that looked like that throughout the course of the game um, on the quarterback. So hopefully we can continue that, but you can see that it all works together. When the quarterback can't step up, we got to win on the edge. And uh, when we're forcing him to step up, we have to win inside. In a backup role, Mario Edwards, 47 snaps. He had five quarterback pressures on the night. And then just talking about effort, we end the six pack with this one. Look at the coverage downfield and look at the effort by Lonnie Johnson. Well, third down, you know, backed up and, you know, pre the pressure could have been better. But then sometimes when the pressure isn't there, you know, the coverage has to be there. And, you know, you can see Patrick trying to work the ball downfield. Lonnie does a great job of, uh, you know, covering some ground, some great range, and, you know, just wasn't able to come down with the interception. But, you know, we were able to, to get off the field uh, enough to give us a chance. He was dinged up on this play. We were hoping he just had the wind knocked out of him for how he fell. Injury report will be out on okay, Wednesday. Okay, right. I just wanted, He came back in the game. Oh, okay. He did a good job. Andrew Adams also in good in good position on that yeah. play. He played another fine game. Yeah, I mean, he's helping us out, obviously. Um, you know, we, we, we miss Hook, and, and we know the value that he has, but... You know, Andrew's done a good job of stepping in there and, and taking advantage of his opportunity. Joshua Kalu got an opportunity in the ball game on Sunday night. Several guys getting a chance to play. And Christian Fulton again with another super effort. Uh, I'd say probably inconsistent. Okay. You know, I think that, uh, you know, there were some things in there that, uh, you know, have to be better. I don't think that it was his best game. And, um, you know, they throw the ball down the field on him. And uh, yeah, obviously those things happen. But. I think all in all, I think he settled down. I don't think he started the game how, how he would want or we would want it for him. But you're expecting more out of him now. Yes. I mean, that's that's how it goes. I mean, we, he's proven that he can play at that level, and uh, he has to do it each and every week. And the injury report will be out on Wednesday. He'll be out. He'll be out tomorrow. All right. More coming up on the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Shift 4, next. Stay with us. Jeffrey Simmons is one of the best defensive linemen in the National Football League, and even though he's a menace on the field, he's a gentle giant off the field, which makes him a perfect candidate to be this week's epic Western genuine titan. If you don't believe us, listen to his teammates. Hit. What a play by Big Jeff. I mean, he's just a monster. It's pure disruption. He, he, he sets the tone for our defense. He brings the energy literally like every day for us. Oh, dropping under pressure. Steps up. Hit again. Dupree and Simmons combined for a crunch. Let's go out there and dominate from start to finish, man. All right. All right. All right. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Talk, let's do it. Let's go. Back to the middle. <laughs> Look at his film. <laughs> I mean, man, play hard and he's strong, freakishly strong, freakishly athletic. Is uh, he's definitely the best player I ever played next to. Hey, we gotta do a lot, man. That's what we do, though. We fight to the end. Jeffrey. Well, first and foremost, I think he's extremely powerful. Plays with, with for sure, an edge. I think it's the biggest thing, you know, being a, a younger player in this league come out here trying to prove yourself every single week. He plays with a certain edge that can't be denied. And obviously it shows on the field. I mean, he's one of the bigger, biggest probably trash targets out there. Big Jeff! That's a takeaway for Big Bud. Keep going. Let's go! Let's go! Come on! Come on! 
I said ball. I said ball. Back to your fan, fourth one. It's a, it's a great thing to have Jeff, and I'm glad he's on our team and not the other team. What is it like when you feel like there is nobody in the world that can stop you? I feel like that every time I step on the field, honestly. He's gonna hold uh, guys accountable. I think that's what uh, makes you know a team great. You know, being able to criticize, you know, and also take uh, accountability, you know, for for what's going on. That is a genuine titan, Jeffrey Simmons. Why do guys enjoy playing with him so much? Well, I think he holds people accountable. He holds himself accountable. He's a great leader. Um, he's the first one in, encouraging the offense. He's the first one encouraging the special teams. You know, we had a long run in Houston. Um, Dontrell and the receivers were down there blocking. It was a pile up and you know, Jeff was off the bench. He's on the sidelines, he's cheering. And that, that's important to me. It, it sends a great message to the, everybody on the team that their job is, is just as valuable to the success of this football team as what I do or what Jeff does or anybody else does. And I think that that's what they respect the most about him is he's not just about himself. I think that um, you know, his effort is something that, that stands out. Um, and I think that he, he really um, embodies everything that we want to be about. Great job on that feature by Jack Mummert, our epic Western genuine titan on the Mike Vrabel Show. We talk more about what's coming up for this team next on the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Shift4. This season, the Titans have asked fans to nominate their Wesley Mortgage Community Hero of the Game. And at our October 23rd win over the Indianapolis Colts, we were introduced to Taylor Scheibe. She's done some very special things. Her organization's dedication to kids living with cancer is unmatched. Here is her story. Dear Taylor, what a journey you have been on. You are a two-time survivor of large cell lymphoma and you've used your story as a testimony to serve others as a vessel of hope and faith. We are 21, 21 years, years past, past our first diagnosis and you have made it to your life mission to advocate, support, and love on those with a similar path. I'm so honored to be your friend and volunteer under your leadership. You listen to a tug on your heart and so many children have benefited through you founding With Love Charity. With Love supports and brings awareness to childhood cancer by inspiring them and giving them opportunities to be kids. Through With Love's programs, I've been able to witness you put smiles on their faces and joy in their hearts. With Love thrives because of your dedication, being 100% volunteer based and every dollar going to the charity's programs. The kids are surrounded by your love and support and you find a way to make each one you interact with feel special. I'm here to say that you, Taylor Scheibe, are my golden hero. You're an inspiration and myself, along with the Tennessee Titans, thank you for your contributions. And we stand with you as we bring awareness to childhood cancer. With love, Diana. She missed out on a lot of her childhood and what it was like to just be a kid. The whole purpose of the toy replenishment and the care packages and the holiday parties is to just really remind them that they're still kids through this journey. and. Just be there for them as much as possible, even if it is like miles away through a care package or if it's right there with them handing them a new toy. That is awesome. She's just as powerful as Jeffrey Simmons, but in a different way. Yeah, Taylor, thank you so much from the Titans for uh, 
for doing what you do and, and helping the children. We're, we're happy to uh, have you on our team. And happy to have our friends at Wesley Mortgage on our team as well to make this possible. The Community Hero, a special new feature, and we look forward to it continuing. When we come back, we're going to know our foe, the Denver Broncos. They're coming to town. The Titans will be ready. If you watch the next segment, you'll be ready. On the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Shift4. At MGM Studio, the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Shift 4, continues. It's time to know your foe, and it's the Denver Broncos under first-year coach Nathaniel Hackett. They are 3-5 and five on the season. Of course, kickoff is noon on Sunday at Nissan Stadium. Broncos coming off of a bye. Second week in a row. Yeah. Somebody coming off a bye. Oddly enough. <laughs> Their offense, 329 yards per game. Not what they want it to be because their new quarterback, whose name everybody knows, Russell Wilson, off to a little bit of a slow start, but they're getting better. Yep, and they, um, they want to run the football. They, they want to be physical, and they want to get these backs involved and, you know, then create things for, for the quarterback and some windows and, and use, um, you know, Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy here. Um, Dolchich is a guy we talked about. Chase Edmonds earlier in the week, his, what his availability is going to look like out there. And there's Dolchich, who, who's got a lot of great range, can run. And, and again, Russell Wilson's you know, back there pulling the trigger. So you know, it's going to be a huge challenge. You can see the play action here taking a shot against the Texans. Um, defensively, they're, they're excellent. And we'll get to that here in a second, but they're excellent. And they just, they, they don't, it's hard to throw the football on them. Front, front is very good. Safeties are Simmons and, and Jackson, and uh, Sertain is, is, is a new next star in this league at cornerback. All right, let's take a look at the defense. Giving up just 288 yards per game, just 166 passing. Draymond Jones, outstanding start to the year. Yeah, athletic, can play inside, can play outside, takes on blocks, can, can make you miss. He's got very good length. He's a you know relatively young player, I think, just in his fourth year, but – um, has gotten better every single year. You know, you could see him out here playing in space. He's a, he's a long player that's athletic and you know, he's gotten better. So that'll be a huge challenge. And again, we've talked about this, Mike. They feel good enough about their young guys on the edge to, to move on from, from Bradley Chubb and, and trade him uh, and, and work with these young guys that they have. We'll come back and wrap it up on the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Shift 4 next. Stay tuned. Get to the Nissan keys to success to beating the Denver Broncos as they come to town on Sunday. Key number one, they're going to want to run the ball. Yeah, I think they are. I think that's what they've done. That's what they want to do. That's what this uh, offense is designed around, and it, it allows them to, to create other opportunities for the receivers if they can do that. You know, Russell Wilson uh, has always been good at play action. That's something that he's done well in Seattle. Uh, and if it's not there, we know that he can extend. And part of that stop on the run is going to be uh, the quarterback and then scrambling around. And, and they don't have any many designed runs for him, but his ability to, to extend the plays and keep them alive, you know, is just as critical as stopping the run when they hand it to, you know, Murray or Gordon or Edmonds or whoever that may be. And disrupting the short pass game. Too. Sure. And the timing and being able to get our hands up. You know, we, we've got some guys that have batted some passes down at the line of scrimmage. Um, I mean, we even were, got Mahomes once or twice, and he had only had four or five coming into the game. So as good as he was at that, we were still able to work on it and focus on it. Um, but being able to do that is something that's going to be critical. Key number two for the Titans in this game against the Denver Broncos relies around special teams. Be great in terms of coverage. Washington is a really good He player. is. Washington is, is really doing a nice job for him. He's got great speed, great quickness. Um, I just – there's more there. You know what I mean? The punt team was – we, we got to just get back to where we were. There was a stretch there where I felt like we were the best punt team in, in the National Football League. And I, I don't think I can say that right now. You know, we got – it starts with the kick. starts with the guys getting out there. Obviously, we got to get some, some work with our gunners. Um, but we're going to have to – we're going to have to rally. You know, we can't let Washington circle us up or stretch and cut. Um, and then you know what I want to do on kickoff. I want to be able to go down there and send a message and uh, cover kicks like, like we did inside the 20 the other night. All right, so key number three somehow usually relies around third down. 
Instead, this time, it's about first and second. Now, stay efficient? Yeah, we, we can't play this game or any game right now, and for that matter, in, in, in third and long, which leads to being efficient on first and second down, staying ahead of the chains, uh, dictating the terms, uh, making sure that uh, you know, we're not having critical penalties, critical mistakes that, that lead to second and 15, third and 10. Uh, defense is too good. Uh, we've talked about that uh, in, in the past. So uh, that's where it's about. And, and we're close, and I'm confident that this week we're going to continue to take steps towards doing that. Let's go get a win. Thanks, bud. The Mike Vrabel Show with me, Mike Keith. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. See you Sunday at Nissan Stadium. Noon kick, Titans and the Broncos. Have a great night, everybody.